This is an overview of a recently completed SIRDEP project ER191075 that investigated the high rate degradation of 3 nitro 124 triazole 51 NTO to environmentally benign end products in sequential reducing oxidizing reactive mineral packet bed reactors. The project team was led by Jim Field at the University of Arizona. The co-PIs were Reyes Sierra Alvarez, John Shorover, and Rob Root. I am Osmar Menezes, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Arizona, who together with Young J.U., Erica Rios Valenciana, and Mitchell Miller, conducted research on this project. The Department of Defense is concerned about the environmental and public health impacts of newly deployed insensitive munitions compounds, IMCs. In particular, the IMC NTO is a concern due to its very high eco-solubility and low hydrophobicity. These properties are expected to provide conditions for elevated concentrations of NTO in munitions manufacturing wastewater. Likewise, NTO is very mobile in soil and aquifers, creating the threat to surface water and groundwater contamination. Thus, there is a need to develop a cost-effective method that can target NTO as the predominant explosive in munitions wastewater or contaminated groundwater. The objective of this project was to demonstrate that reactive minerals in a sequence of reducing and oxidizing packet bed reactors can rapidly degrade NTO to safe end products. We also studied how the IMCs Dinan and nitroguanidine could be reduced by reactive minerals. Our investigations demonstrated that ZVI and iron monosulfide minerals rapidly reduce NTO to ATO. Then, the complete oxidation of ATO to final inorganic products such as urea, ammonium, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gas can be achieved using manganese 4 oxide minerals. To further test the application of our findings, we operated two laboratory scale ZVI packet columns treating either acidic or siconeutrum NTO containing wastewater for six months. We found that both columns effectively reduced NTO to ATO, but the column treating the pH3 influent exhibited prolonged longevity in reducing NTO, treating 11 fold more power volumes of water than the column treating the pH6 influent until the breakthrough point. The exhausted ZVI can be reactivated using one molar hydrochloric acid, which allows full recovery of its NTO reducing capacity. Moving on to ATO oxidation, we assessed the effectiveness of lab scale columns packed with granular manganese oxide to treat ATO. The columns were operated under two different regimes simulating wastewater treatments and accelerated groundwater treatment conditions. The columns showed excellent hydraulic performance and they were highly effective in transforming ATO into soluble safe end products, chiefly urea and ammonia. The column simulating wastewater treatment reached breakthrough at 2,400 power volumes. On the other hand, the column operated using simulated groundwater conditions removed ATO effectively for the duration of the experiments, which was equivalent of 660 Four volumes. Manganese oxides were fully regenerated to their original oxidative capacity using potassium permanganate or sodium hypochlorite. Characterization of the solid phase mineralogy indicated that the ZVI in the columns was oxidized to iron oxyhydroxide minerals, such as magnetite, lepidocrosite, and goatite, as confirmed by Sicontrom X ray absorption spectroscopy and X-ray diffraction measurements. For the manganese oxide packet columns, after reacting with ATO, the manganese oxide materials that initially were dominated by manganese 4, such as pyrolusite, ramsdellite, and tudorokite, were converted to manganese 3 minerals, such as grotite and manganite, and soluble manganese 2, indicating a general reduction of manganese oxides. We have also demonstrated that iron 2 monosulfide, including commercial iron sulfide and machina white, a naturally occurring mineral, can reduce NTO and dinan to their respective aromatic amines. 
These results indicate that this reaction may be driving the fate of IMCs in aquatic sediments and anoxic subsurface environments rich in iron sulfide minerals. Solid phase analysis showed concurrent oxidation of machinawite to goatite, an iron oxyhydroxide mineral, and elemental sulfur. We also investigated the treatment of nitroguanidine, an IMC and co occurring component of IMCs in contaminated water and wastewater, by ZVI, machina white, and commercial iron monosulfide under anoxic conditions. The primary mechanism of nitroguanidine transformation was nitro reduction, which generated nitrosoguanidine as an intermediate. Further degradation of nitrosoguanidine by ZVI yielded aminoguanidine as a significant product whereas guanidine was preferably formed in the presence of machina white and commercial iron monosulfide. Other degradation products detected included cyanamide, cyanoguanidine, and biguanidine. We assessed the treatment of nitroguanidine in ZVI and iron monosulfide packed reactors operating at pH 3 and 5.5, the optimum pH conditions established for each mineral, respectively. Nitroguanidine removal efficiency data obtained during the 45 days of operation confirmed that ZVI outperformed iron monosulfide. Nitroguanidine was effectively removed until the end of the operation at 494 volumes in the ZVI packet column. In contrast, nitroguanidine breakthrough was observed after only 104 volumes in the iron monosulfide packet column. The innovative use of reactive minerals presents an effective solution for both in-situ groundwater remediation and high-rate treatment of munitions manufacturing in wastewater contaminated with NTO, nitroguanidine, and other IMCs. The robustness and longevity of the minerals used, coupled with the potential for ZVI rejuvenation through acid treatment, make this technology a promising option for the treatment of water streams containing IMCs. Furthermore, the use of naturally occurring minerals such as machina white provides valuable insights into the potential for natural attenuation processes in contaminated aquatic sediments and subsurface environments. Further research is recommended to test the feasibility of the proposed technology in pilot scale studies with groundwater from impacted Department of Defense sites and industrial wastewater to establish design parameters and full scale application. We appreciate your attention. Thank you.